Good morning. Welcome home to Ironton First, United Methodist Church. Good to have you with us this morning. Uh, again, this Lord's Day, and uh, trust that you're doing well wherever you're at and staying warm and safe. Uh, good to have you with us uh, in our virtual worship service this morning. Take a moment, if you would. There's a link here in this Facebook post to complete a Connect card. I want to invite you to fill that out, uh, if you would. That's a confidential Connect card. It only comes to me, but uh, take a moment, fill that out. And if you're also watching this morning, take a moment and just say hello and tell us where you're watching from. We always love to connect with folks and find out where they're tuning in from. So uh, let me open up with a word of prayer this morning. And we've got a couple of great hymns for you and uh, some breakthroughs we're going to share with you before we jump into our morning worship service and our sermon today. So let me pray uh, this morning. Open our ears, O God, that we might hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears, O God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through Scripture. Open our ears, O God, that we might understand your promises to followers both old and young, ancient and modern. Open our hearts, O God, that we might enter into the love you offer us. Amen. Well, Chris is going to lead us in a couple of hymns this morning. The words will be on the screen. Wherever you're at, we hope you'll join in and sing loud. Make your neighbors wonder what's going on at your house. Chris? Oh 
mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting yielded and still have my own way Lord have my own way search me and try me Savior today wash me in just now, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Chris. Thank you, Judy. Just a few announcements to make you mindful of. We mentioned last week that the, the uh, ladies, UMW, has gone back to having their uh, monthly Bible study, and they've already had the first one, so it's not too late for you to join in if you would like to be a part of that. They meet on the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30, so if you'd like to be a part of that, reach out to us and let us know. They do that via Zoom, and so we just need your email address to send you that link. Also, our Bible study has resumed on Wednesday nights via Zoom. That's at 6.30, and we invite you to be a part of that if you'd like to be. We're studying Proverbs at the moment, and we invite you to tune in with us and follow along. And uh, we made mention of this. I want to re remind you of it one more time for all of our teens out there. Uh, we have now created, or Amy has created, what she's calling a youth store box. And it's basically uh, you're going to earn points. It's like frequent flyer miles for coming to church. Uh, but you're going to uh, earn points for all the virtual youth classes and so on, and you'll be able to use that for some great uh, gifts uh, and even to offset some of the costs for some of the upcoming trips uh, and events that they've got going on, hopefully, this year. And then we're also working uh, each month. We're going to have a focus in Operation Christmas Child and, and uh, begin to put together our shoe boxes. We're looking to set a brand new record again this year of how much uh, we do in that, uh, that capacity. So uh, right now we're doing uh, our focus is on the teens and putting together shoe boxes for the teens. And so out on our Facebook page, uh, Amy has placed some things some, uh, that they need for those shoe boxes. And so you can go out there and uh, check on that, or you can reach out and contact Amy directly and find out how you can help. If we do a little bit every month, we're going to have a great turnout come November. So we invite you to be a part of that. If you have an announcement or something you need to uh, make sure the entire church is aware of. Please uh, reach out to us and let us know what that is. Uh, you can also type it in the comment section if there's something we've missed already uh, on this post this morning so everybody knows what's coming up, okay? Well, it is uh, that time of the morning where we want to uh, honor the Lord with the first fruits of our labor. And so as we uh, uh, look to the Lord's hand uh, just to bless us financially, we're going to invite you as well to give. Several ways you can do that. You can mail it to the church at 101 North 5th Street here at Ironton. You can drop it off during our normal business hours, which right now is abbreviated. It's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 10 till noon. Or you can use the online giving app, Tithely, that we have. That's a great way to set up a recurring gift. Uh, that way, every week or every month, however you want to set it up, it's going to come. You don't have to even, more, even think about it, uh, but you can uh, maintain and honor your promise to God. Uh, let me lift up an offertory prayer. Uh, over our offering this morning, and then we invite you to join us as we sing the doxology together. Let's pray. <clears throat> Holy God, like the first disciples, we have heard the call to follow Jesus. Yet too often we have failed to introduce him to others, not willing to take the risk that go with true discipleship. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, make us bold in following. May we give more readily, Love more deeply, show mercy and compassion more extravagantly, and seek justice for others courageously. Help us to walk in the steps of the one we follow. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Again, we thank you for your faithfulness and uh, just honoring your faith commitments to God. Uh, let's share our breakthroughs this morning. Maybe you've got a special way that God has just shown up in your life this week, and you've just seen his presence, his hand, in a mighty way. Uh, we'd like to invite you to share those. Maybe post that as a comment on how God has blessed you this week. Let's give him the praise because he truly is worthy of it. And also last week in our breakthrough celebrations, we reminded you of our breakthrough prayer. I hope you've joined with me to pray that at uh, 3.56 p.m. every day. Uh, again, we've got a, I've got a reminder on my phone, and my wife actually showed me how to put it on my watch so that I can be reminded at 3.56 every day to lift up that prayer uh, together. This morning, during our pastoral prayer, uh, there will be a time to say that with me just as we do the Lord's Prayer together, and so I invite you and encourage you to do that as well. So if you have some prayer concerns that you would like to lift up, again, if it's a public concern, feel free to post it out there. We'll be praying for you. And if you have a private concern, again, that Connect card is a great way to share that concern with only me. And uh, that goes on my daily prayer sheet so I can uh, be lifting you up in prayer. Uh, so be sure and use that uh, in that capacity as well. Uh, again, there's a number of folks that uh, I've gotten word this week who are dealing with uh, COVID, uh, other health issues. Uh, I've got a number of folks and friends that are uh, going through chemotherapy, dealing with and battling cancer. Um, so we want to lift up all those concerns. Uh, a dear friend of ours uh, lost her son uh, this week as well as, as uh, he passed away. Uh, so again, there's folks out there also the mourning the loss of loved ones, and we want to pray for them as well. So there'll be an opportunity uh, during the pastoral prayer to lift those names up right where you're sitting. Uh, lift them up quietly on your heart or uh, vocally on your lips and let God hear your petition. In doing so, you're being faithful and obedient to be in prayer. And, uh, boy, nothing really rattles the cages of heaven like prayer. Amen? So uh, let me lift us up a, a pastoral prayer this morning. And, uh, again, I'm going to invite you to join with me in our breakthrough prayer and the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Gracious God, you create us and love us. You invite us to live together in a community. We acknowledge our slowness to do good, our blindness to injustice and our complicity in deferring the dreams and hopes of the oppressed. We condemn racial injustice in our pronouncements, yet we cling to the privileges derived from inequity. Forgive us, gracious God. Tomorrow is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday as we consider the events of the past several weeks and months in our country. It would appear that we still have much to learn about equality in our nation. Dr. King's words echo still. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Help us so to love one another that we drive the hate away and bring light into the darkness. Fill us with your vision of love. Guide us to live by your vision of compassion and justice and empower us to work to build the beloved community where everyone is welcomed. All are valued, power is shared, privilege is no more, and all your children know wholeness and well-being. In accordance with the commands of Jesus Christ, shake us from our sleep with your imperative to do justice. Move us to action with the compassion of your grace, and give us courage to pay the price, however painful or costly, that the justice you intend may be done on earth as it is in heaven. As we share our breakthrough prayer together, help us lean into you. Lord, we put our trust and hope in you. Lead us today and every day. We remember your word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Thank you for loving us. 
we ask that in your mercy you attend to those that are sick among us. For those that are mourning the loss of loved ones, we ask for your comfort. We pray for the Bernthold family. For those wandering in darkness, shine your light. For those needing wisdom, give clarity and direction. For those in need financially, Lord, in your divine providence, provide them exactly what they have need of. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us even now as we pray this prayer with one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Last week, in my State of the Church message, I outlined four key areas that we are going to focus on. Today is the first in that series on relational evangelism. This series is called Follow Me, and it deals with what it means to follow Jesus as a true disciple. You know, Jesus never said that following him would be easy. He did say that his yoke was easy and his burden was light, but not that there was no burden. Jesus also told us that there was a cost to pay in following him. And while there is a cost, there is also tremendous blessing. When I became a Christian, it took a lot of people by surprise. I guess most people had already written me off as a lost cause. I had this reputation of being a hellraiser as a teenager and my early adulthood looked as though it was going to follow down the same road. You see, I didn't come from good Christian stock. I didn't grow up in the church. In fact, the only Bible that I remember as a kid was the really big coffee table Bible with the picture of Jesus on the front of it. My family didn't have money. We didn't have a great reputation. And I didn't go to a major university. I was just a poor kid from the wrong side of the tracks with a lousy pedigree. <laughs> I was the talk of the town. It just wasn't good talk. And I tell you that story because it really makes a great segue into the text we're going to use to kick off this series. And so I want you to follow along. We'll put the words on the screen. But follow along as I read from the Gospel of John chapter 1. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in him in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. My guiding phrase from the text is found there in verse 46. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Anything good. Do you hear how that sounds? Anything good? Nazareth was a small village that they estimated would have only had about 150 people in it. It wasn't a place of industry and business. 
In fact, nothing was notable there at all. Nazareth was in this area called Galilee, and Galilee was actually looked down upon by the Jews as it was considered to be a place where the lowest class of mean people lived. Nazareth was even worse than that. The people of Galilee even looked down on Nazareth. And I say that because Nathanael was a Galilean, and even he looked down on Nazareth. When I became a Christian in 1977, I'm sure there were people that thought, how can anything good come from that? It won't last. Maybe, that, maybe the church can help keep that boy out of jail. You know, in the contentious environment that we live in today, you can surely hear the presupposition behind the sarcasm of Nathaniel's words. You hear the prejudice tucked away as though it was part of some innocuous joke. In a culture that has found offense in nearly everything, anything that we say or do is under scrutiny. Will what I say or do offend others? Are my actions racially insensitive? Have I done all I can, all I can do to include those that aren't like me? Honestly, we should take time to consider our words and actions. If you've taken time to seriously reflect on your personal positions, you may find that you have some pretty entrenched positions on race and ethnicity. You might discover that you are not as welcoming of others as you thought. You may treat those less fortunate with less dignity than those with wealth and position. As we deal with this subject of relational evangelism this year, I'm going to be asking you to examine your own personal hospitality. Have you made space for all people in your life? Before we can share the good news with others, we must learn to accept them into our life. Community, real community, is made up of people from every walk of life, every ethnicity, every socioeconomic status, every culture. And my prayer is that each of us take the time to listen and learn about all those around us, especially those that aren't like us. It may be that they will also take the time to learn about you. Perhaps you will both find that you are more alike than you think. A worship service like this, even though it's virtual, virtual can be a time where we hold up the ideal of community and pledge to live into it as we seek to follow Christ. In worship, we're often confronted with our sinfulness and at other times worship offers us space for grace grace that can heal as a way forward in the community of believers we have a safe place to ask questions and seek answers our text is one that perhaps you haven't read in a while perhaps never it is the calling of nathaniel and it is only here in john's gospel that you read of his calling or at least by this name Nathaniel. Some scholars will tell you that Nathaniel was his first name and Bartholomew was his surname or last name. When Philip tells Nathaniel that they had discovered the promised Messiah, his response is incredulous. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I mean, it would be about the same as someone here in Ireton say, can anything good come out of Wheelersburg? Now, come on, you know, you know that's what you thought when I came here, right? Okay, you got to say amen to that. Why did Nathaniel respond in the way that he did? Well, maybe he just wanted to be left alone, and he really didn't want Philip to bother him. Maybe he really thought that anyone from a hick town like Nazareth wouldn't have anything of significance to say to him. Maybe he had quit hoping for and searching for the long way to Messiah. Maybe he decided that it was all just a bunch of hype and not even worth considering. I mean, he was doing all right on his own. What did he need with a Messiah? But was he really doing all right on his own? 
Are we doing all right on our own? Most of the time we think we are, don't we? Most of the time we are content with the world just as it is as long as it doesn't rock our boat too much. Most of us are just grateful the world isn't any worse than it is. We just go with the flow. We've been told about Jesus coming back our whole life. And we believe it, but we don't have our bags packed for the trip yet, do we? But deep down, deep down in the places of your heart that you don't visit very often, you long for Jesus to come back soon. We want more joy and fullness in our life than what we are currently getting. We want the relationships we have with others to be deep and satisfying. We want those we love to trust in that love. We want to live the fullness of that love. We want to be acknowledged, to have value in the world. We want someone to know us, all of our weaknesses and strengths, our beauty and our ugliness, to be known and still be loved. It almost sounds like fantasy, doesn't it? Such knowledge, such love is not possible in this world, a, a world where the word of the Lord is rare. And so we bury such thoughts, such quiet desperation behind the facade of being all right, of not needing anyone or anything. We live the facade of someone having it all together, when in reality, we're falling apart inside. Perhaps you're listening to this message this morning. You feel like someone that lives in Nazareth. You feel as though you can't make a difference. You feel as though you don't matter much to, to others because of who you are or where you come from. In fact, you may even wonder if God can love you based on your past. I know that feeling. I lived that feeling for a long time. And I want to tell you that God does love you. You matter to God, and because you matter to him, you matter to us. Every person has value to God, and every person has value to us. Why? Because we're all broken people, too, in need of God's grace. We've all tried to hide our past from the world. But God knows your past and your future, and he still loves you. He loved you enough to send this person from Nazareth to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come from anywhere, for that matter? Well, I have good news for you. Yes. <laughs> yes, it can. Out of Nazareth comes one who knows all about you and who loves you still. Out of our darkness comes the voice of the one that calls us by name as he did Nathaniel. And here's some other good news. Out of our church filled with broken people, hypocrites and sinners, can come a sense of family and community that remakes us. Out of your house can come a trust and openness that gives you that sense of home you were created for. From folks you'd least expect, unconditional love can come that builds us up and makes us whole. Maybe it's been such a long time since you heard a good word from the Lord that you've dozed off, you've fallen asleep at the wheel. Well, hopefully something I've said this morning has given you a little wake-up call. This call is a call to hope. We need to listen to this call and pay attention because something good is indeed coming to us, or rather, something good has already come among us. Let us claim it as those who are ready to follow Christ. As we think on Nathaniel's words, can anything good come from? Those words actually get turned around on us, don't they? 
when we begin to ask, can anything good come from those unlike us, we have to examine that question and ask, can anything good come from within us? Is there anything good in us that is worth God's grace and Christ's compassion? When you look in the mirror today, ponder that question. And the answer is a resounding yes. Yes, there is good in you. Even though you are a flawed and broken person just like me, there is good in you. There is the good of the image of God in which you were created. And God's grace is available to restore us into the example of the saints of God. And so let us open our eyes, our hearts, our arms to the good in those around us. And face, and that face that stares back at us in the morning, each, each morning in the mirror. Let's realize that God is good to us. And there's some good in us that he can use. Let me close with a word of prayer. Gracious and forgiving God, we thank you for bringing to our attention that we are not always the most hospitable people. We often overlook the least, last, and lost in favor of those that are more like us. And that is hypocritical of your church. Forgive us for our narrow-mindedness and prejudices toward those that are different than us. You call us by name to follow you. As we look in the mirror each day, help us to see ourselves as we are. And also to see the good in us because we were made in your image. Help us to move on toward perfection and restoration to that image once more. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As Chris leads us in a hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Sing with us and ask these questions to yourself this morning. God is good and God loves you. Chris? of his glory and grace turn your eyes upon Jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I have a benediction and a challenge for you this morning. Jesus said, follow me and come and see how we can change the world. So my challenge for you this morning is this. Let's follow Jesus. Let's follow him. And see what happens next. God bless you all. We'll see you next week.